eerie scenes in the middle of London today, reflecting high streets across the country, as the chief medical officer sends out a stark warning that if the virus continues on this path, hospitals will run out of room and there will be avoidable deaths. Scientists are calling for stricter measures to try and curb the rates of infection. The government haven't yet ruled that out. I don't want to speculate because the most important message is not whether the government will further strengthen the rules. The most important thing is that people stay at home. Every time you try to flex the rules, that could be fatal. The health secretary said this morning that most people were following the lockdown rules. This is usually one of the busiest shopping streets in the country. I usually couldn't stand here without people moving me out of the way. So if lockdown restrictions aren't tough enough, what levers are there left to pull? I think they need to um, close nurseries, close places of worship. I think they need to be very strict on key worker status for education. And I think that the biggest other thing they could do is actually pay people and support people to isolate, particularly those on low income and those working outside the home. Are the public being as compliant as they should be at the moment? Yeah, so there's actually no evidence that people aren't being compliant. I don't think it's that people aren't being compliant. It's that the rules are, are laxer. I mean, more places are allowed to be open. There hasn't been this big push on two-meter distancing. Um, and we're just allowed to do more things. So I, I don't think you can blame the public for this at all. Today, the government announced the rollout of mass testing in 131 local authorities in England in a bid to catch asymptomatic cases. They'll use lateral flow tests, which get results in under 30 minutes. But there's questions over the effectiveness of these tests. A pilot in Liverpool was found to have missed up to 60% of positive cases. While more testing is being rolled out, the drive to vaccinate vulnerable people also ramps up. From tomorrow, hundreds of thousands of over 80s and NHS staff are being invited to book for a jab. There are seven new hubs, including this one in Stevenage, that are opening this week, where medics have been happily getting theirs. Such a good day for healthcare workers and, well, for the population. Um, I feel really, really proud that I'm here and that I'm able to get this first dose. And by doing this, I can be protecting not only myself, but my, my family, but all of my patients. Two million people have been vaccinated here, according to the Department of Health. But how does that compare to other countries? We're now third behind China, who says it's administered nine million doses, and the US. The European country closest to us in terms of vaccines given is Italy, with 580,000 people having their first dose. Those countries in blue on this map are still to administer their first jabs. And there are real concerns that while developed nations roll out their vaccination programs, developing countries are being left behind. The People's Vaccine Alliance says 70 countries will be unable to vaccinate 9 out of 10 people. COVAX, the international organization tasked with getting COVID-19 vaccines to poorer nations, has bought enough doses for around 650 million people, but has yet to get them approved and sent out. AstraZeneca has sold them its doses at cost price, while Pfizer, the first vaccine to be approved, has not yet taken part. Today, the Pope added his voice to the global vaccine drive, saying he would take the jab. Back in the UK, the government has now pledged that every adult will be offered a vaccine by autumn. But for the NHS struggling to cope, this couldn't come soon enough. Well, with London struggling to control its coronavirus crisis, the worst hit area in the capital and indeed in Britain is Barking and Dagenham. Their latest figures suggest as many as one in 16 people are feared to be currently infected. Margaret Hodge is the local MP and she joins me now. Uh, Margaret Hodge, I'll come back to the vaccines in your area at the moment, but the figures from the hospital this afternoon, 1,034 patients have died with COVID at Queen's Hospital, Romford, since the start of the pandemic. Do you have any confidence now that the hospital has this under control? 
Um, I haven't had confidence that the hospital has been able to cope since before Christmas. It was clear to me before Christmas that they were beginning to lose control. That was a mixture of the uh, variant coming into the borough, the new variant, and also a whole set of circumstances in our, in our borough where we've got um, poor people, we've got people going to work because they can't afford to stay at home even if they're found to be positive, and we've got multi-generational households. So it was clear to me then, the health service, the local health service are trying their hardest. I meet with them weekly, and last week they told me GPs are now coming into the hospital, people have been taken over commu uh, off community care services and are now working in the hospital. But, but, uh, there are a lot of staff who are sick in the hospital, and also there has always been a difficulty in our local hospital in recruiting and retaining staff. And right. it's now telling, and it tells, if I can just say this, Kathy, it tells on the uh, in, intensive care beds, because the ratio should have been, used to be one to one in normal circumstances. The government changed it to one to two. Two weeks ago, my local hospital said it was one to six in terms of trained ICU nurses. And my feeling is it's probably got worse and it will get worse because we haven't reached the peak yet. And that would be one trained ICU nurse per six patients. Is that what you're saying? Because the hospital, the hospital don't publish those figures. And I did put something like that to them earlier today and they wouldn't confirm that that was... Um, the ratio, but I mean there are nine and a half percent of staff off sick. So what can be done about this to address this problem and keep more patients safe there? Well, we want the vaccine, but we need the help now. And we simply need more, uh, more beds, particularly ICU beds, and we need more staff. And the government has got to start trying to get people from across other areas where the need is not quite as intense into areas like ours, where the infection rate is massively high and uh, where people are uh, dying. It is, it is just, Cathy, I can't tell you, it is terrible to uh, watch it. And it's not that we've got a local authority that doesn't try. We've got a local authority that introduced testing, for example, for teachers before Christmas, whether they're asymptomatic teachers. We've got a local council leader who literally goes into the local ASDA and tells them off if they're not putting the masks on. So we're doing everything we can, but we are being overwhelmed. Okay. And last but, week, but, yeah. Well, I just wanted to pick you up on just that point about being overwhelmed. What is the situation that you're being briefed from the hospital about oxygen right now, and if they've got a sufficient quantity? Well, last week they told us that the demand for oxygen was over 100%, 108%. Um, uh, every day. So the demand is exceeding supply. Now, at this point in time, there isn't, people aren't in danger because they are uh, uh, ensuring that the way in which they distribute, ration the oxygen isn't creating danger. But again, I would stress this point that um, we still haven't reached the peak. And that's why I asked the Prime Minister an urgent question on Wednesday saying, what are his contingency plans around the provision of oxygen? Again, it's a perfect storm because you've not just got the COVID-19 cases, but you've got people coming anyway into hospital respiratory diseases uh, that, that are winter, winter diseases. Right. What a contingency, and I know our hospital is not alone in suffering from this lack of oxygen. And you haven't had a reply from the Prime Minister yet? I haven't had a reply right. from Prime Minister, but I wrote to Matt Hancock on Friday because I'm so concerned about the issue of oxygen. And okay, it's Sunday, he hasn't replied yet, but right. I do think this is a really urgent issue. And the hospital, a hospital source said to me earlier, they've never had to ration either oxygen or emergency care, just to be clear on that point. But I Kathy, must stop. I'm, I'm okay. afraid I've got, I have to end it there. I haven't got any more time. But Dame Margaret Hodge, thanks very much for joining us.